Hey Warriors, it's Coach Paulina. Today I am teaching you how to do a Steel Mace 360 swing. I'm very excited to coach you through this because it is one of my favorite movements to coach. Before going into the techniques and the strategies of doing the 360 swing, let's talk a little bit about which muscles are being used and activated in the swing and then what are the benefits of the 360 swing. So first and foremost, your hands and your forearms are going to be building strength and endurance throughout your swing. So at first, maybe today when you're learning it, you might feel that your hands and just overall grip strength is going to be taxed. Trust me, over time you're gonna get a lot stronger and you're gonna feel that you can carry the mace for a little bit longer of a time period. Next, we have your biceps, your triceps, your chest and back. So with the upper body, your biceps and triceps are working in opposition. So I'll talk you through that as we're going into the different steps of the 360 of when the biceps and triceps are working and when the chest and back are working as well. So kind of you can connect this to whenever the mace is in front of you, it's most likely going to be chest and biceps. And then whenever the mace is behind you, most likely it's going to be your back and triceps. Next, we have your trunk complex. So we have your rectus abdominis, which is the front side of your core. We have the obliques, which is the side of your core. They also help anti-rotation. And then we have erector spinae, which run right at the sides of your spine. And erector spinae, in this case, is going to be a big stabilizer. Last but not least, we have your entire, entire shoulder complex. So we have your deltoid muscle here. We have your uh, rotator cuff, which is right on the back side of your scapula. And then we have your scapular stabilizers. So whenever you visualize that 360 swing, your shoulders or the shoulders kind of stick out to be that main muscle group that's working. But just as I had listed um, the plethora of muscles being used in the 360, you'll start to kind of recognize which muscles are being activated through this 360 as I coach you through it. So those are the muscles. Now let's move into the benefits of practicing and programming the 360s into your routine. So first we have grip strength. Grip strength is key. Um, grip strength is utilized in a lot of different exercises. So just working with the mace um, by itself, it's going to help you increase that grip strength and ultimately you're going to be able to do a bunch more exercises um, in addition to a lot more 360 swings and steel mace exercises. Next we have core strength and stability. Like I had mentioned, your trunk is going to be in charge of anti-rotation and then anti-extension and, and flexion. So with core trunk stability and strength, we also have postural work. So a lot of our postural work um, ties directly into what the core is experiencing and taking signals from different types of feedback. So as you're going in through the 360 swing, if your core is not doing its job, you might start losing your posture. If your core is doing the right thing, the thing that it's supposed to do, you're gonna find that your posture feels strong, stiff, and just ready to rep out those 360s. Next, we have rotational strength of your shoulders. So visualizing that 360, your shoulders are moving through a large range of motion as your shoulder itself is a ball and socket joint. It has a lot of range of motion there. A little PSA though, if you already know that your shoulders have limited range of motion, do not force your shoulders to go into a range of motion that they do not have with a 360. So I would just self-assess, kind of go through different ranges of motion with your shoulders, see if you have any pain points. Um, and if so, I'm gonna give you different resources and different ways to modify the 360 so you're not forcing yourself into that position. So over time, in addition to having rotational strength with the shoulders, we're also going to build um, just powerful shoulders in general. You're going to be able to create that dynamic force of your 360 swing and to be able to control your, um, 
just reaction and strength to this dynamic tool moving around the body. And then finally, which we kind of already talked about, is the mobility of your shoulders. The 360 does not necessarily increase the mobility of your shoulders, but it helps maintain the mobility of the range of motion that you already have. So those are the benefits of our 360 swing. And I'd love for us to already get moving a little bit, get ourselves comfortable with the mace. So before we get moving, go ahead and just grab your mace. We're gonna go over two landmarks. So this is your um, handle of the mace, and this is where we're most likely going to be moving around. And next we have your steel mace head. So head and handle. Head is gonna be your weighted part of your mace. It's the point where it's kind of dictating the pathway of your 360 swing and your handle, you just want to make sure that that stays nice and close to your body. So those two landmarks, just keep in mind, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about them as we start moving. So your first exercise, this is meant to kind of warm up your body before we start swinging a little bit. So you're going to grab your mace, head facing down towards the ground, and then handle is going to be close to your body, starting right at your belly button. So your hands are gonna be stacked. They're pretty much touching each other here. Your elbows are relaxed. They're bent at about 90 degrees and you're gonna find your best posture. So feet can stay about hip distance apart. If you're comfortable with slightly facing the toes out, that's fine. Standing up nice and tall, rolling those shoulders back and then two, slightly tucking those hips underneath and keeping your rib cage down. From here, we're gonna do a ladder climb so your hands are going to slowly climb all the way down to your steel maze head. As we keep your hands right around the belly button. So notice how my hands aren't coming up as I do the ladder climb. They just stay right at the belly button. And then from here, when you touch the steel maze head, that's your last repetition. And then we're just going to climb our way back up towards the handle. So what this exercise is doing, it's bringing awareness to your grip, your hands, your forearms. You might start to feel a little bit within your shoulder complex, the complex that I had brought up in the beginning. And lastly, your posture. Good, so we're gonna do one more lap one lap counts as all the way down towards the steel maze head and then all the way up towards the end of the handle. Good, once you're done with your ladder, go ahead and set down your mace. Next, we're gonna do a ladder, but now your steel maze head is gonna be facing up towards the ceiling. Tap into your posture. And now all of a sudden we have this unstable object kind of floating above us. And what's gonna help stabilizing it is using those eyes. See, as soon as I took my eyes off of the head of the mace, it went crazy. So we want to make eye contact with the head of the mace the whole time that you're doing your ladder climb all the way up towards the steel mace head and then all the way down towards the handle. Same rules apply here. Your hands are gonna be about belly button distance or belly button level. And then as you're climbing up and down, you wanna make sure that that mace is close to you and that we're not sending it too far out. So keep it close, feet are grounded. See, I forgot which way I was going already. There we go. You might start to recognize that a different part or a different section of muscles are activated in this position. Pay attention to your chest muscles and your back muscles, your lats. Those are helping stabilize in this exercise. Perfect. Go ahead and set that mace down. Shake it out. Feel out your grip, feel out your shoulders, kind of listen to what your body is telling you after those 
two exercises. So remember, ladder climb with the steel mace head down, ladder climb with the steel mace head up. I typically just do three reps of both each side. So next, you're gonna set your steel mace right up on your shoulder, and we're gonna do the same thing. Ladder climb, but now with the steel mace right behind you. So I want you to grab the mace on its center, and we're gonna send it up and overhead. From here, you're gonna slowly find the bottom of your mace, and we're gonna start right at the bottom. So already from the get-go, I'm gonna have you pay attention to how your shoulders feel. They might be a little tight. So before you start moving, you can either hold this position or if you ever need to take breaks, you're gonna pull that mace up and overhead and just set it on your shoulder for a little bit of recovery. Before we start moving, I want you to tap into um, your lats a little bit. So make sure that your lats are active, rib cage stays down and that your biceps are not touching the ears, but they're just out to the sides. Lastly, I want those hands right behind your head. If you're um, very mobile, you can lower those hands right behind the neck. And from here, we're gonna ladder climb those hands all the way down towards the steel maze head. So I'm gonna give you a different view here so you can see what I'm doing behind. So I'm just slowly inching my way all the way to the steel maze head and then back down towards the steel maze handle. There we go. So as you're climbing your ladder, I don't want to see those arms extend and those hands kind of peek out from behind your head. You want to keep those hands hidden the entire time. So if you can already feel the tension, we're activating a lot of triceps here. This is like a tricep burner, a tricep focused exercise. Once again, it's a lot of grip. And then like I had mentioned um, from the get-go, your lats and then your trunk or core stabilizers are keeping you in that strong position. So after you do three ladder climbs, you can set that mace right up on the shoulder, and then a good way to just take it down to the ground, cross body, and take it to the ground. Whew. Those ladder climbs behind the body, whew, those are an awesome way to just warm up for that 360. So those three ladder climbs, perfect starting point for you to just get comfortable holding the mace, moving it um, from landmark to landmark. Cool. So next, I'm gonna explain a few steps or a few landmarks that I like to break up the 360 with. So first, we have a metronome. Next, we go into pendulum. And then finally, we have seat belt. So with those three landmarks, I'm gonna take you through how to get comfortable with them, and then we're just gonna mesh it all together to create your 360 swing. So first, we're going to Grab the mace by the center here, so you're going to choke up on your mace. I'm going to have my right hand on top. With my right hand on top, I'm going to bring that mace close to my body, and elbows are relaxed. They're bent at 90 degrees. From here, I'm going to metronome swing from right to left sides. So it's just a side-to-side -side swing. It's really not considered too much of a swing versus just a sway. Let's call this a sway. So your steel mace head ultimately is going to reach right at the top of the shoulder. Try not to over launch or overreach your steel mace head to where it's falling below your shoulder. So right in line, bring it to eye center and then switch. As I'm doing my metronome, my eyes are gazing and following the steel maze head. A few other pointers. Notice how my hands are staying at my body's midline versus moving them off of my midline. 
So really what I'm doing is I'm stabilizing my mace with my upper body and I'm just allowing movement from my wrists to sway into the metronome from side to side. So I usually like to just warm up with 10 metronomes with my right hand on top and then 10 switching your grip with your left hand on top. They don't have to be super fast or super slow. I want you to find your pace. Tapping into your breathing, inhaling through the nose, and exhaling through the mouth. Good, if you need to set down the mace for a second to shake out your grip, go ahead and do so. That is your metronome with a choked up grip. Now we're going to slide the hands down to the bottom of the handle to get a little bit more resistance with your metronome. This is what it looks like. So my right hand is on top, planting my feet, making sure my posture looks on point, lowering my hands to about belly button region, and then from here, making sure my eyes stay in contact with the bell or the head of the mace. I'm going from side to side for my metronome. And for now, I'm keeping just a slower pace. And then if I'm a little bit more confident, I'm going to increase that metronome pace just a little bit. Similar to that ladder climb, you might find that your grip is like a little bit more taxed because we are working with a longer handle, you're gonna find that it feels a little bit heavier. So once you've done 10 with your right hand on top, go ahead, switch 10 with the left hand on top, making sure that your hands are within belly button region, and then keeping that mace nice and close. Good. Go ahead, send that mace to the ground, shake out your grip. Pay attention to those muscles that are being activated. Cool. So that is your metronome. Remember, metronome is that first portion of your 360 swing. It's pretty much the most important part of your swing because it sets up either a good rep or a not so good rep. Next, we're gonna do a pendulum swing. So pendulum is whenever your mace comes behind the body. So pendulum is that dynamic portion of your swing, swinging behind your body. So once again, setting your mace up onto the shoulder. Love this position because it's very chill. You just get to relax your grip, your shoulders, and the mace just kind of rests on the shoulder. So if you're ever doing this type of work, uh, feel free to just come into this resting position. So let's start off by choking up on the mace. So we're not gonna be at the handle, we're gonna be right in the middle. And you're gonna send your mace up and overhead, making sure that your hands are stacked, they're touching each other, and that your hands are right behind your head. I'm keeping distance between biceps and ears. Make sure you're not touching at any point or tensing up too much on the mace. We wanna be pretty much relaxed, just kind of breathe through it. So from here, similar to your metronome, your pendulum is going to look the same with a little bit more of a dynamic flare. So as I'm swinging the mace from side to side, whew, I feel like a little bit of tension, like gravity is pulling that, the head of the mace towards the ground. So I want you to practice this. So we're gonna do about 10 here. I know I did more than 10 but I want you to recognize how this feels compared to your metronome. It might feel a little heavier, it might feel a little smoother. Once you've done 10, go ahead and set your mace on your shoulder. Shake it out. And then when you're ready, you're gonna do the same thing, 10, but switch your grip. Still choked up on the mace. Metronome from side to side. Sorry, pendulum, I just called us a metronome. 
pendulum from side to side. Notice how my hands stay right behind my head, so my hands aren't whoop, peeking through side to side. You want to ultimately just keep those hands hidden and go from side to side with your pendulum. Once you've done 10, shake it out, send it back up onto the shoulder for a little bit of recovery. We're just gonna repeat this once more, but you can already guess that we're gonna switch up your hand position. So instead of being choked up on the mace, you're gonna work your way down to the handle of the mace. And make sure you just take your time uh, pulling that mace up and overhead. Sometimes we can just whack ourselves if we're not super conscious. So from here, as you can guess, that mace is a little bit longer because we're working with more of the handle. So your uh, pendulum is gonna look bigger and feel free to add a little bit more momentum as you're going from side to side. Your trunk is stabilizing your pendulum. The rest of your body is straight and stiff, trying to, whew, trying to offset any type of rotation. So you're gonna do 10 with each grip, right hand on top and then left hand on top. And I will turn towards the back here. Nice. Good, I like to just slow down my mace once I've done my reps. And then, boom, setting it on the shoulder. Nice job. So, a question that I get a lot is with the pendulum phase, um, some clients, or just in general, anyone that really tries it, they might hit themselves in the butt or the back during the pendulum phase. So make sure that, and I'll show you in a choked up grip, that we're not resting the mace on our bodies at all, but we're creating space from your body and then the rest of that position in your pendulum. So we're not super narrow here, we're not pulling the mace close to the body. Instead, you're opening up here and then going into your pendulum. So creating a little bit more space in the pendulum versus kind of uh, tensing up and pulling it towards your body. So that ultimately should help avoid any type of like hitting the body at any point with the mace. Cool, ready to move on. So those exercises, your ladder climb, and then practicing your metronome, and then finally going into pendulum, are just really standard exercises to help warm up your body and familiarize your nervous system to those different landmarks. The only landmark that we did not talk about is your seat belt, and we're just about going to talk about it right now uh, because I'm going to introduce the first part of your 360 swing. This first part is gonna be very slow, so I like to call it the muscle 360. The muscle 360, treat it as moving through the landmarks and getting comfortable in each landmark. So at no point are we using dynamic forces here. I want you to hit the landmark and just keep moving. So first, you're gonna grab onto your mace, standing tall, posture is grounded. You're gonna have your right hand on top. Your index finger is going to point out to the side and it's gonna tell you where your mace is going to travel. So with your right hand on top, my index finger is telling me my metronome is gonna to go to the left shoulder. So from here, from center, you're going to metronome to the, your left shoulder. Hands are gonna come up and over the head for your pendulum. In this last portion for seat belt, your hands are gonna come up and over your right shoulder, up and over your right shoulder, and you're gonna pull back to your belly button region to reset to center. So let's go over that again. Metronome, pendulum, seat belt, center. Metronome. Pendulum, seat belt, center. Keep practicing. 
and I'm going to bring up a point that I get questions about all the time. A 360 pathway does not mean that your hands are creating a 360 around your body. Instead, it means the steel mace is doing a 360 around your body. So with your pathway of your hands holding onto the mace, your initial portion of your metronome, your wrists are going to go into that direction. They're going to launch your mace into that direction. So for instance, my right hand is on top. I'm launching it to my left. And then right after that metronome, my hands come right up and overhead for your pendulum. That mace is going to swing right behind you. And then for your seatbelt, your hands are going to come up and over your head through this pocket here and then pull back towards your belly button. So once again, belly button, up and over the head, up and over this little pocket of above the shoulder, and then back to belly button. So really we're cheating the circle. So it's almost like a half, not even half a circle, but like half the range of motion. So this is gonna save us a lot of energy versus traveling those hands whoo, in a big circle. It's also a lot more effort that way. So if you're having trouble with finding those landmarks, set your maze down and just practice the pathway of your hands. And as I'm kind of showing you, I was literally physically touching my body so I can feel those landmarks as I'm moving through. So with your muscle 360, I like to do around five to 10 repetitions on each side. So let's go over it again. If you haven't switched your grip, go ahead and switch grip. So now we're gonna go towards the other side. So left hand on top, index finger is telling you where to go. So metronome towards your right shoulder. Now we're gonna go into your pendulum. Hands come up and overhead to pendulum. Hands come up and over the shoulder, right around that head. Woo. And we come back to center from that seatbelt. So once again, <sighs> metronome, pendulum, <sighs> seatbelt. So really practicing that muscle 360 is going to be essential to understand the landmarks of your 360 and to practice by keeping that mace controlled and nice and close to your body. Once we get familiar with your muscle 360, feel free to always try inching your hands just a little bit lower. So go ahead and give it a shot, inching your hands lower onto the mace. Right hand can start on top. Your index finger is telling you to go to the left shoulder with metronome, pendulum, seat belt, and back to center. Nice work. Good, once you've done anywhere from five, let's just do five repetitions of this one, it's a little harder, go ahead and switch your grip. And start to notice the differences of Ooh, maybe right and left sides, whichever side you may feel that it's dominant or maybe a little bit weaker. And then also, yeah, this side is definitely my weaker side. Because we moved your hands a little bit further down the handle, you might feel that it's much heavier. So if at any point, feel free to adjust those hands closer to the steel mate's head or lower down onto the handle. Once you get familiar with that muscle 360, and I'm sure you're already getting the hang of it, we're gonna introduce a little bit more of a dynamic 360. So let's go ahead and start by choking up on your mace. So your right hand's gonna be on top, which means we're gonna be swinging boop, to our left. Let me go ahead and show you one repetition first, and then I'll kind of explain what we're gonna be doing here. Whew. 
as I pull my hair up and overhead. Let's do one more rep. This progression is directly meant to introduce the dynamic power of your pendulum swing behind you. So this gives gravity that opportunity to pull your mace behind you and to test if your posture is really doing what it's supposed to. So that first portion, starting with the right hand on top, swinging to the left, you're going to keep your eyes glued onto your mace for a metronome. As soon as your hands come up and overhead, your gaze comes forward. You're going to pendulum for three counts. Pendulum to the right for three, two, one. And on that one count, you're going to pull your mace up and over head or through that shoulder pocket to your seatbelt position. So let me face you. Metronome. Hands come up and overhead for three, two, one. One seatbelt pull. Now that we've introduced some dynamic movement, your seatbelt is going to have to be a little bit more powerful to bring that mace back to that starting position. Three, two, one, pull. With your pendulum, you're going to feel a big stretch of your lats. With your seat belt, you're going to have to pull through the lats to bring it back to center. Once you've done, let's just do about five on each side. Go ahead and switch to the other side. Remember, these are all trials. If you feel like you ever need to set down the mace, go ahead and do so. Um, and just listen or jump in whenever you can to feel when you're to feel that you're ready for it. Cool. So switching sides, switching grip. Left hand is on top, swinging to the right. Eye contact with your mace through the metronome. Hands come up and overhead. Pendulum for three, two, one. Big pull for your seatbelt. Nice. Good. Keep practicing on that side. Another thing that I did not mention is your eye contact through the seatbelt. As you work your hands lower onto the mace, you're working with a long piece of metal, and you're going to find that your uh, seatbelt, if it's not powerful enough, if it's too powerful, or if your gaze is off, your steel mace might fall forwards. So as you're practicing your three, two, one drill, as you're coming up into that seat belt, you can make eye contact with your steel mace head to make sure that you're following the pathway of resetting back to center. So let me show you again. Three, two, one, pull. So I slowed that, down that seatbelt phase just so you can see that I'm making eye contact and just making sure it made it over my shoulder safely and then I'm bringing it back to center. So those are the first two intro drills. They're also great regression drills for your 360. If you ever feel the need that you're not ready for the full dynamic 360, and instead wanted to practice the muscle 360. So remember muscle 360, we're just hitting landmarks. This is literally no swing involved. No swing involved. First drill. Second drill is going to be your dynamic three, two, one drill. Three, two, one. Three. Two, one, shh. Those two are crucial just to get you comfortable with the landmarks and then adding in a little bit of dynamic power for your pendulum and then a big pull for your seat belt. All right, I think we're ready to do the full 360. So we're gonna take out two of those pendulums 
and instead you're gonna go for the full 360. So I'm gonna show you a few repetitions and listen to my breathing. Not that breathing was not a big focal point in the last two exercises. I now want you to just to tap into it a little bit more. We're gonna use our breath to really um, work with us for the full 360. Cool. Setting up. I'm going to switch my grip. So as you can tell, getting ready for that swing, big inhale through that nose, and then as your mace comes into your pendulum, and then eventually your seatbelt, big exhale to then prepare for your next repetition. So with the full 360, like I had said before, we're taking out two of those pendulums, just doing one pendulum to give you a full um, rotation. So go ahead and practice anywhere from five to 10 repetitions on each side. Uh, that'll get you confident in moving through your 360. Remember first, we're just starting off with a choked up grip. And then I'm gonna show you that full 360, if you're ready for it, we're gonna move your hands down the handle. So anywhere from five to 10. If you feel that hmm, maybe the first few reps were a little easy, feel free to move your hands one to two inches down at a time. Good, and then when you're ready, you're gonna switch sides, keeping um, the grip where it was for the first side. So we don't wanna be up here for your right side and then all the way down here for your left side. Just make sure you're hitting both sides equally. As you're practicing your opposing side, I'm gonna talk about two important factors now that we're into the full 360 position. So with your 360, there's a big push and pull component, and it kind of occurs at different times, although most of the muscles of the body are working in opposition. Like I had mentioned in the, in the beginning, chest and biceps are gonna be working together. Triceps and lats are gonna be working together. Chest and lats are opposing muscles. Biceps and triceps are opposing muscles, but they all come together for the 360. So, for your metronome, you're gonna get ready for a push phase. So to launch your mace up and overhead to pendulum, it is your push phase. And then to bring your mace back to center, that is your pull phase. So from the get-go, chest, biceps, a little bit of front deltoid are working together to now push that mace up and overhead for your launch of the pendulum. So we're launching that bad boy. Pendulum is propelling us. And lats, triceps, and a lot of core is pulling to bring us back to that center or starting position. So I want you to tap into this a little more as you're practicing your swings. Also, if it helps you to kind of talk to yourself um, as you're learning something, this is also something that you can practice. So as you're moving through your 360, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. Talk yourself through it. Go ahead and recover for just a moment before we try the last portion, which is your full 360 swing. So really the full 360 swing, your hands are gonna be at the bottom of the handle, giving you a little bit more resistance and challenge. 
now that you're working with the full mace, we're not choked up, that's the full 10 pounds that you're gonna be swinging or however many pounds. For beginners, I do recommend a lighter mace. I started with a seven pounder. Looking back, it's crazy because it felt so heavy, but ultimately, whichever mace that you feel comfortable with, go ahead and grab that. Okay, cool. Full 360, so what it looks like. Hands are right at the bottom of the handle. Let's pull your mace close to the body, keeping it around belly button region. Eye contact, push, pull, pull back to your center line. So I'm just gonna demo those three and I will switch sides for you. Cool. Whenever you're ready, go ahead, go for that full 360. As you're working, I'm just going to talk a little bit more about your 360 mechanics because it's all so exciting now that you're getting into the groove of things. And also, don't expect yourself to be able to do the full 360 because trust me, it takes months, if not years, to perfect your 360. I know it took me about two years to be comfortable with my 360 and I know that sounds like a long time but really um, in two years I was able to work up to a 20 pounder so progressive overload is ultimately the goal and being comfortable with moving a little bit of heavier weights. So let's talk a little bit about posture um, as you get more comfortable with the 360 and what the rest of the body is doing. So now that we're working with the end of the handle and your mace feels maybe a little bit more heavy, you're kind of maybe fighting for control a little bit. With the 360 you might find or you might see other coaches or just on media that some people use a little bit more of a drive from the rest of their body to kind of manipulate that mace. And that is totally okay. I'm not opposed to moving your body along with the mace to help you propel it to the other side. I am also not opposed to you using your feet to manipulate that 360. I do recommend though, when you're first learning your 360, is to start with a good grounded posture and to limit any sort of propelling or movement from your trunk or torso or upper body for your 360. The reason is we wanna focus in and maintain that core um, movement until you proficiently understand what the 360 feels like and what your body is capable of even doing in the 360 position. So until you're able to do a fairly comfortable and uh, a good 360 in like your own terms, then try and play around with it. See what feels good. For other people, wide stances are very comfortable. I see people that swing with very narrow stances. And then from there, it's gonna be up to you to experiment and kind of move through different types of 360s. So remember, this is only an intro to your 360 swing. We have so many different options of working with the steel mace, different stances, different weights. We have different techniques like tens and twos. We have single arm 360s. We have combinations and flows. So remember, this is only the first part of your swing. There is so much more to learn after you just get down the basics of your 360. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn your 360 with me today.